During the summer of 2004, Usher was riding the peak of his success with his fourth studio album, Confessions. Just a few months earlier, the lead single from that album, Yeah, went on to become the best-selling record of his career. The follow-ups, Burn and Confessions Part 2, both ascended to the top of the Billboard Hot 100, making him the only artist in history to earn three consecutive number ones on the Hot 100 airplay. Besides the R&B superstar dominating the radio, he also achieved groundbreaking album sales. With debut figures slightly surpassing 1 million, Confession still holds the record for the highest single week sales by an R&B artist. Usher's reign didn't end that summer, as he paired up with Alicia Keys for their duet My Boo. After logging 6 weeks atop the Hot 100, the singer spent a total of 28 weeks at number 1. In other words, Usher held the top spot for more than half of 2004. It's no wonder why the New York Times declared 2004 the year of Usher. However, although the singer's success was exceptional, it's impossible to separate the legacy of R&B music during the 2000s and 1990s from his achievements. Just a year earlier, the music of Beyonce and Alicia Keys was all over television and radio. Following the year of Usher, the torch was passed to Mariah Carey as her single We Belong Together not only became the song of 2005, but also the song of the decade. It's difficult to think of how vastly R&B's mainstream appeal has changed since these times. Most certainly, the genre continues to have lasting influence with the help of modern stars including The Weeknd, SZA, Giveon, Summer Walker, Janae Aiko, and countless others. Yet one can't help but to feel that despite the success of the aforementioned musicians, the impact of R&B music seems to have diminished. In this video, we will explore the pinnacle years of R&B, making it abundantly clear that the genre has significantly waned in popularity. We will compare and contrast the trajectory of decades past to the current state of the genre. So without further ado, let's begin. In 2021, there were all but two R&B influenced songs that reached the top spot on the Hot 100. Silk Sonic's Leave the Door Open and Justin Bieber's Peaches featuring Daniel Caesar and Giveon helped R&B maintain its mainstream appeal. Now, this doesn't mean the genre's influence is limited to number one singles, but we'll later find out that this achievement was much more frequent in decades past. In recent years, Ariana Grande and The Weeknd have also had their fair share of chart-topping hits. Nevertheless, it's quite evident that many of these singles are a hybridized version of R&B and often lean towards pop and trap sonics. The following songs are the very few R&B influence cuts that have reached the summit in the past decade. Ariana Grande's Thank You Next, The Weeknd's Heartless, Starboy, and The Hills, Bruno Mars' That's What I Like, John Legend's All of Me, and Robin Thicke's Blurred Lines. Audiences and critics also point out that many of the artists who benefit from this genre blending are non-black. Considering the origins and history of R&B music, this whitewashing is cause for concern. Musicians such as Her, Kehlani, Hardy Next Door, Bryson Tiller, SZA, Janae Aiko, and Summer Walker repeatedly release music that is arguably just as good, if not better than many of their more successful non-black counterparts. Yet none of these artists had careers comparable to the likes of Ariana Grande, Bruno Mars, or Justin Bieber. Furthermore, it doesn't take much research to discover that the biggest influence on these superstars' music is derived from the golden ages of R&B. After all, some may remember that Bieber was originally introduced to the world by singing Usher's You Got It Bad, Chris Brown's With You, and Justin Timberlake's Cry Me A River during the early days of YouTube. When asked about her musical influences, Ariana Grande once stated, I love Mariah Carey. She is literally my favorite human being on the planet. And of course, Whitney as well. As far as vocal influences go, Whitney and Mariah pretty much cover it. With that said, in order to truly understand how R&B music has gotten to its current state, let's first examine the genre's rise to inescapability. R&B, short for rhythm and blues, dates all the way back to the 1940s. Since its inception, the genre has undergone many transformations. The 1960s saw a rise in the popularity of soul music with the likes of Sam Cooke, Aretha Franklin, and The Supremes. A decade later, the Isley Brothers, Stevie Wonder, and Earth, Wind & Fire experimented with funk music, which we all now recognize as the unmistakable 70s. In the 1980s, Michael Jackson, Luther Vandross, and Whitney Houston 
danced their way to the top of the charts with their disco-inspired hits. Although some may categorize these artists in R&B, it's inaccurate to do so unequivocally. In the late 80s to the early 90s, what was once deemed as urban music took an interesting turn. The fusion genre New Jack Swing, made up of hip-hop, dance-pop, and R&B elements became universal. In these years, artists including Bobby Brown, Janet Jackson, and Keith Sweat capitalized on the hip new sound. This era is responsible for producing unforgettable records such as Poison by Belbiv DeVoe and My Prerogative by Bobby Brown. It's important to trace back the origins of New Jack Swing as it sets a precedent for the golden years of R&B. As the popularity of this newfound genre began to wane, the music industry became instantly dominated by R&B music. In each year of the 1990s, there were at least 15 songs that reached the top 10 on the Hot 100, with 1995 having 28 cuts accomplish this feat. The early years of this decade brought us household names such as Mariah Carey and Boys to Men. It's hard to accurately describe the impact these two acts had on the music industry. Anyone that grew up during this time would liken their success to that of Drake or The Weeknd today. In fact, the best-selling record of 1992 was End of the Road by Boys to Men, spending an unprecedented 13 weeks atop the Hot 100. The sheer amount of R&B artists during this decade is astounding and almost impossible to name fully. Some of the most notable acts not already mentioned include TLC, R. Kelly, Tony Braxton, SWV, Jodeci, Brandy, Monica, Aaliyah, Mary J. Blige, 112, Maxwell, D'Angelo, Lauren Hill, Escape, In Vogue, and Erica Badu. This list doesn't even begin to cover the total of artists as there are many who might not be easily recognized despite their hits. Additionally, for more than half of the decade, R&B and R&B adjacent music occupied the number one spot in the United States. A list of the most unforgettable chart toppers might include SWV's Week, R. Kelly's Bump and Grind, Boys to Men's I'll Make Love to You, Montel Jordan's This Is How We Do It, TLC's Creep and Waterfalls, Mariah Carey's Always Be My Baby, Tony Braxton's You're Making Me High, Black Street's No Diggity, Usher's Nice and Slow, Casey and JoJo's All My Life, Next's Too Close, which also happens to be the best-selling song of 1998, Brandy and Monica's The Boy Is Mine, TLC's No Scrubs, and Destiny's Child's Bills, Bills, Bills. The popularity of R&B became so widespread that pop acts including Madonna, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, Spice Girls, Britney Spears, and Christina Aguilera began making undeniably R&B-inspired music. For instance, Madonna sought out legendary producers Babyface and Dallas Austin for her 1994 album Bedtime Stories. This was the icon's first and last album to experiment heavily in R&B music. Moreover, songs including Quit Playing Games With My Heart by Backstreet Boys, Too Much by Spice Girls, and What A Girl Wants by Christina Aguilera are technically classified as pop and R&B. Another major indicator of R&B success during the 1990s was the frequency of gold and platinum certified albums. In the United States, a gold certification signifies 500,000 units sold, while platinum status represents 1 million copies sold. During the decade, the Recording Industry Association of America awarded an average of nine R&B albums with gold or platinum status per year. In the 2010s, that average decreased threefold to merely three R&B albums per year. It's worth mentioning that the algorithm for recognizing gold and platinum status has changed in recent years. However, despite the RIAA changing its formula to adapt for streaming, R&B albums are still certified at a lot lower rates than decades past. The best-selling R&B albums of the 90s were as followed. The Bodyguard soundtrack, Boys to Men's 2, Mariah Carey's Music Box, Daydream, and her self-titled debut, TLC's Crazy Sexy Cool, Boys to Men's Cooley High Harmony, Destiny's Child's Writings on the Wall, Lauren Hill's The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, Tony Braxton's Secrets, R. Kelly's R, and Tony Braxton's self-titled debut. All of these albums were accompanied by massive hit singles that are responsible for shaping one of the most memorable decades of music history.
Many may have thought that the prevalence of R&B music would have declined at the turn of the century. Yet in some ways, the genre only grew to become even more popular. In the late 90s, hip-hop and R&B music became almost inextricably linked. The featured guest rap verse was so ubiquitous that it began to become expected. Similarly, many rap songs featured an R&B singer on the hook. During the early 2000s, we were introduced to superstars including Alicia Keys and Ashanti. And of course, no one can forget Beyonce and Justin Timberlake's rise to solo stardom. It was during this era that audiences also witnessed the apex of many artists' careers, such as Destiny's Child, Jennifer Lopez, and Usher. In the mid-2000s, we became familiar with the likes of Rihanna, Chris Brown, Neo, and Sierra. The combined efforts of these artists along with countless others sustained R&B's impact during this decade. When compared to the 90s, the average amount of top 10 hits per year actually rose from 15 to 19. Also, just like the previous decade, R&B music occupied the number one spot on the Hot 100 for more than half the decade. This simple fact means that R&B was arguably the most successful genre across the board in the US during this 20-year period. Some of the most notable chart-topping hits of the 2000s not already mentioned include Destiny's Child's Say My Name and Independent Women, Aaliyah's Try Again, Santana's Maria Maria, Jennifer Lopez's I'm Real, Alicia Keys's Fallen, Mary J. Blige's Family Affair, Usher's You Got It Bad, Ashanti's Foolish, Nelly and Kelly Rowland's Dilemma, Beyonce's Crazy in Love and Baby Boy, Sierra's Goodies, Mario's Let Me Love You, Chris Brown's Run It, Mary J. Blige's Be Without You, Rihanna's Umbrella, Beyonce's Irreplaceable, and Alicia Keys's No One. It's essential to spotlight some of the R&B artists of the 2000s who may not have been considered megastars. An incomplete list would include musicians such as John Legend, Keisha Cole, Jagged Edge, Music Soul Child, India Ari, Avant, Donnell Jones, Craig David, Genuine, Joe, Amory, Robin Thicke, Anthony Hamilton, Jill Scott, and Lloyd. Highlighting these performers is necessary because they showcased the breadth and diversity of R&B acts during this decade. Each one of the aforementioned artists earned their fair share of hit singles and platinum albums. Their presence was also a signifier of the multiple tiers that inhabited the urban music landscape. In contrast, today's hit producing stars are vastly limited. This is evidenced by comparing the average of gold or platinum albums per year during the 2000s and the 2010s. The former decade certified approximately 11 albums per year, while the 2010s saw three albums achieve this feat as mentioned earlier. The best-selling albums of the 2000s include Usher's Confessions, Alicia Keys's Songs in A Minor, Mariah Carey's The Emancipation of Mimi, Cisco's Unleash the Dragon, Beyonce's Dangerously in Love, Usher's 8701, Alicia Keys's The Diary of Alicia Keys, Justin Timberlake's Future Sex Love Sounds, Destiny's Child Survivor, R. Kelly's TP2.com, Justin Timberlake's Justified, and Alicia Keys's As I Am. These were just a fraction of the albums and artists that defined the 2000s as the last decade to be truly commanded by R&B. Fortunately, R&B music is far from an endangered genre. Instead, a lot of the most exciting acts tend to straddle the line between niche status and mainstream visibility. Most urban music enthusiasts are somewhat familiar with artists such as Brent Fias, Ari Lennox, Snow Allegra, Masego, Georgia Smith, Lucky Day, Kaliucci, Sir, Neo, Victoria Monet, and Kiana Lede. In many respects, these musicians are producing some of the most quality records in R&B music. The question is, will their music ever ascend to the popularity of their predecessors? Perhaps R&B is experiencing a fall from grace, much like rock music over the past 20 years. Or maybe the pendulum will swing back in R&B's favor, similar to the resurgence of disco and funk music. Only time can reveal the fate of such a beloved style of music. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. What are your thoughts about the current state of R&B? Do you believe the future of this genre is as bright as its past? Lastly, who are some of your favorite R&B artists of the past 30 years?